a meeting to order. And uh, we have with us, we have Jason Merrill. Hi, Jason. Uh, Paul's iPhone, is that Paul Simonera? That's me. <laughs> okay, thanks, Paul. Paul's iPhone is a little, uh, you know, you don't know who Paul is. Welcome. And we have uh, Victor and Dorinda and Orca. Uh, do we have any amendments to the agenda? No amendments uh, to the agenda. Okay, hearing hearing none. Um, I do have a couple of quick things before we uh, before we get into the agenda. One, uh, Sarah, did you hear any more from Liz about whether she was going to be able to zoom in or not? Um, she did not say. I think she just said that it would be difficult. Um, have to message these people. She's asked, as you know, to uh, to be um, included to, to uh, have to have the board defer wait uh, a decision on the, the the vacancy. Yeah, that was my that was my point. So uh, we had uh, some some back and forth between uh, Sarah and Liz. Basically, Liz saying she'd really like to be included in the discussion of the next select board person and she would prefer that we pass over that item on the agenda tonight and take it up at our next meeting when she will be here. And I guess out of our, uh, yeah, Phil. Are we able to do that? Isn't there a timeline? Um, no, the only, t the only timeline is that a, a vacancy must be posted within 10 days of the vacant, the, uh, uh, the, you might within, you don't have to appoint somebody within 10 days. Okay, that's what I was must have been yeah. thinking of. Yeah. So I, I guess out of respect to her and honoring her request, and I think it is a good idea for uh, for all of us to be involved rather than just uh, rather than just three of us. I would suggest uh, I would suggest we pass over that tonight. And I apologize to you, Jason. I know you're here probably to hear the discussion about that, but. Uh, so Peter, what has changed between uh, the meeting we had last time when she didn't care and uh, and uh, then sending the letter? What 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 has changed? I, mean, I don't really care, but I just thought I was kind of like, like a little bit of a shock, you know. Uh, the answer is, Victor, I don't know. All, all we got is the uh, all we got is the request. Yeah. Can I ask for some guidance here? I've got iPad 6 and I've got a 603 area code. I've been asking them to identify themselves before I allow them in the waiting out of the waiting room. What do you think I should do? They haven't, they haven't responded. They don't respond, spike them. It's an open meeting. You have to let them in. I have to let them in, but also it's a Zoom oh, meeting. I don't want to get spawned. To identify themselves, I don't think we have to let them in. I don't know. Oh. All right. Well, I'm going to let them in, but I'm going to just be, I want them to identify themselves. So okay. here they come. I don't want any, I don't want to be bombed. Okay. The person who has signed in is iPad six. Would you please identify yourself? John Utis. Oh, it's Sean Utis. Oh, okay. Thanks. There you go. We're happy to see you, John. And okay. the, six, the 603 area code. JJ Vanda. Uh, uh, oh, okay. okay we, now have somebody, we now have somebody on the phone with 603. Okay, I think we, we got it. We covered. Okay, JJ Vandette and John Yudis. Okay, thanks. Okay, all right. So, um, I mean, my inclination in situations like this is to, uh, is to honor a reasonable request from a fellow board member, but I don't know... Uh, how uh, you feel, Randy, and you feel Phil. It's basically up to the three of us to decide. So I think, uh, uh, you know, the, the conversation and having input is good. Um, I, I do think that we need to think about the folks that are, um, that have made time to be here tonight too, for that conversation. Um, so, uh, you know, a, a mixed bag from my end. Yeah, I don't. I don't disagree with that, but I just think uh, this is an this is an important uh, an important decision, and I don't think it's mission critical to appoint somebody tonight. I mean, another uh, 
another two weeks really won't matter that much. And and believe me, uh, Jason, I do apologize. Uh, I do apologize to you. Uh, if you've inconvenienced yourself to be here tonight, I'm I'm sorry. So uh, I believe Peter, I'm correct if I'm wrong, sir. But can't I rule as the as the presiding officer to pass over, or do we have to vote? Can uh, is she going to be at the next meeting? It was my understanding she was not going to be able to attend the July fifth meeting either. Oh, she uh, said it was. She said she said she would. She said she would be there. She asked uh, to hold off until the July fifth meeting when she could attend. Okay. Okay. Sir, I believe as the as the chairman, I can rule that we're passing over that item. Is that correct? I don't know. I'm not a moderator. I'm just a select board assistant. I'm not a. a well, let's have a let's have a let's yeah, have let's, a motion on a vote. That's always the safest yeah. thing to do. Okay. I'll move. I'll move that we pass over a appointment of a select board member. Okay. Thank you, Randy. You'll second. Sure. <laughs> sure. Okay. So all those in favor of uh, passing over the appointment of the for the uh, vacant select board seat, please say aye or raise your hand. Aye. Aye. Okay. So we have we have uh, we have passed over that. Um, and again, my apologies, Jason. Um, um, approving, if possible, a new town road foreman and setting the foreman's rate of pay action likely. Is this you, Victor, or Randy? I'd be happy to touch base on it. Yeah, Randy's done the rest of it. You might as well let him finish yep. it up. Okay, go ahead, Randy. Thank you. Um, and it's so... So uh, we have engaged with uh, every applicant that applied uh, for the position. I think everybody knows we've gone through interviews. Um, we have we have engaged in some conversation with Eric Metiger, Um and we've come to an agreement to um, pay Eric. Uh, do we want to put everything out there on the uh, pay and the um and the additional believe, the additional vacation sarah yes you have you you should you should he's a public employee you should say what he's yeah. being paid paid and um if you want to go in the benefits that's fine and also what day he starts okay um i believe the uh effective date is uh july 1 32 dollar an hour and starting with three weeks of vacation time and our normal benefit package. Every uh, yeah, everything else just follows suit. Uh, you know, into you know, follow the personnel policy. Okay. A second. So it's been moved and seconded to appoint uh, Eric Mativier as our town uh, town road foreman under the terms that Randy has outlined. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Congratulations, Eric, and good luck. Uh, hold on a sec. Yeah, Victor. Yeah. Yeah, you want to thank? I want to thank uh, Phil and uh, and Randy. They did an excellent job of uh, getting us through that. And well, and I also would like to great. like to make sure we a notify the other the other applicants, but b yeah, I was just, their interest. I was just going to say that. that. Yeah, it was a good process. Yep. Yeah, I was just going to say that. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. Thanks, Vic, and you too. Thanks for participating. So, how are you going to notify him? Do you want to send me a, uh, a Vic? Are you going to reach out to him individually, or do or Randy or whoever, or do how? What's my role in this, if any? I I believe that we should put together a, a letter acknowledging their uh, their interest and uh, just simply letting them know that that uh, we found somebody that we feel is a good fit for us and wish them the best in their, in their search. Would you mind giving um, me just some outline? Cause I don't know if you want to mention the existing road, road crew position, stuff like that. Uh, we did uh, throughout uh, the interviews and whatnot. And I, at this point, I would just leave it at, you know, simple and acknowledge them, acknowledge their interest and. Okay. Um, so you want me to, me to, so I'll send them out tomorrow. 
I think that's appropriate. Okay. You could you could I'll sign them, uh, Sarah, if you want to. I've got to stop down and sign the orders anyway. So. All right. Well, I'll try to get them done by the time you come in. Okay. It'll be late morning. Monthly joint meeting with the Middlesex Fire Department. We have Scott, I believe, with us. Hi, Scott. I, th I thought Eric was going to be here too, unless, because uh, I thought it was supposed to be 520, right? It was the time for. Yep. Yeah. Eric told me today he was planning on being here. We're okay, filming well, the schedule. Let's give them. Uh, let's give them a few more minutes, and move on. I think we've got the trails committee here. Is that correct? Are you the representative, John? No, uh, I am. But but Adrian and Michael Levine are heading this. Oh, there's Adrian and there's Michael. Yep. Okay. So. Uh, Who's, who's doing the talking for the trails committee? I can do uh, it. Adrienne and I are kind of uh, co-piloting the trails committee, but she was actually on the walk. So she will take this one. Okay, that's fine. Welcome, Adrian. You're, you're backlit, so you're kind of invisible. I know, let me see if I can move. I'm in North <laughs> Carolina at a place. <laughs> you look like the ghost. Yeah, there, that's much better. better. <laughs> yes, um, thank you. Thank you for putting us on your agenda so quickly. The Trails Committee has sort of designated three trails that we're working on, one of them being the um, North Bear Swamp Road or class four section of the road. And when people have walked it, there's a huge puddle on the, I guess it's the south end, just beyond the last house. And we met with Shane on May 17th to try and our first thought was maybe the town could fill in the puddle so people wouldn't have to walk through it. It was really hard to get around it. And there were, Rupert Thorne was there. I was there, Mary and Dennis Nealon were there. Shane was there um, and Hal Elms was also there. And we looked at it and we talked to Shane and the upshot of it was that in order to get fill in there, they'd have to cut tree branches down on the road because the road is so overgrown and probably put in some kind of drainage because it didn't seem like just fill would fill would cover it and keep it and as we talked more we realized that that's not what the trails committee had in mind at all we just wanted a path where people didn't have to get soaked rupert talked about being willing to trim some of the trees along the side just to make it a little bit wider and that would help probably 90% of the time, you know, except in really heavy, wet times like the spring. Um, and then the discussion got to, well, if we didn't want to upgrade that so that cars could go through, Mary Nealon had spent a lot of time talking with the neighbors, just letting them know about this trail. And some of their big complaints are that people try to go up that road and they get stuck and then they have to drag them out um, Google Maps sends them to Hunger Mountain the long way, and so they don't really know what they're getting into. And through that conversation, we started thinking about, well, what if this was, that part of the road was turned into a trail, and then it could be blocked just with rocks or logs so that cars actually couldn't go through. So that prompted me to bring that to the Trails Committee. The Trails Committee agreed that that was a good idea. And so now we're coming to you suggesting that. So the thought is that the trail would start just on the far side of the Hunger Mountain Trailhead parking lot. So obviously you could get to the parking lot and then would come through just to where the, um, that first house is. And I, I'm not sure I know the name of those people. It's about half a mile, a little bit less than half a mile. Um, and turn that part into a trail. And we know that that's a process for you guys and you have to decide. Yes. Does so, anybody, anybody wanna add anything else? Okay. So here's my- uh, if, yes, I, if I could just make a couple mentions. Yes, go um, ahead. Peter, Peter, it's Paul. Uh, and let me know if you can't hear me. I'm getting back to the notch road. Um, 
you know, and I've, I've walked with, uh, with Mary Nealon and also John during my time there and, and worked with Rupert for uh, beaver dam mitigation and stuff like that. Um, so it's been an inherently, you know, it's, it's kind of been a, a habitual offender regarding a, a lot of maintenance for little return. Um, plus, we were, we were also dealing with a lot of folks uh, going four wheeling through there and, and placing rocks, uh, you know, to close that off during mud season never came to fruition. It, during my 12 year tenor, we never saw the benefit of, of that road staying un, under the town's kind of, you know, jurisdiction. I, I'm just throwing it out there that I, I don't see any benefit in, in keeping it a class four. I, I don't see what we would gain out of it. So just to throw that little bit of history out to everybody. Okay. Sarah, you wanted to be recognized? I just wanted to say that in my very early morning walk today, there was a guy from Virginia who did exactly what Adrian said, went right by, went right up there and got stuck. <laughs> at around Thank six o'clock this morning. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> so here's here's my my only my only thought about this. It's historically from time to time we have uh, thrown up roads in Middlesex and downgraded them to trails. Um, but for the most part, although just recently we did we did uh, we did downgrade one section of road, which was in effect oh. a, a through road. But other than that, in the past, in my memory, we have never, we have never thrown up a, a road which connects one side of town to the other. Uh, uh, I guess mostly the, mostly the thinking has been, you know, potential future development, you know, who knows. But once you throw up a road and let it really grow up and only become a trail, then, then it's an, a huge deal to... Uh, to turn it back into a class four or a, or a class three road. Is this, is this place, and I was gonna try and go up there today and I didn't get a chance to get up there just to look at it, although I believe I'm familiar with the spot. But is, is this also the place where we have trouble with the beaver dams or is that another place? Peter, that's a different place. Okay. If, you go, if you go up East Bear Swamp and you turn right and you go past Coleman's house, Yep. And then you go up that narrow and there's a big new house on the right and Joanne Flanagan's fence is on the left, gate is yep. on the left. It's maybe 100 or 200 yards beyond that. Is where the beaver dams are or where the puddle is? No, are? is where this puddle is. Okay. The so, beaver dams are much closer to the Hunger Mountain Trailhead. Okay, so here's my, so here's my question. Um, if it's a matter of putting in a culvert and putting in some fill to make it, viable wouldn't we as a community want to do that or is the annoyance of people driving through there the neighbors are we are we cutting off anybody's access to their land or property by making it a trail from my understanding the state of vermont if you start at the puddle and look towards hunger mountain the state of vermont she's she's right she's we lost you adrian what, what Adrian's saying is, you know, is that the state of Vermont is on the left side of that. There are actually two lakes. They're big. And I have a question for the board and also for our, our future foreman, Eric Metivier, which is that if we have, last time you downgraded Dolan Road because it did not meet class four standards. And I'm not sure that this road would meet class four standards in that way. And I don't know if, you know, because we're switching between road foremans, I don't know if Ashley, Andrews or whoever has been out there to do a survey to find out if we if this is a, a non-conforming segment and that might be something the, the town needs to look into. Do you know what I mean? Right. Well, the puddles certainly make it a non-conforming segment, but it's a question of what's the what's the I mean, we've been talking about this for a, for a long time and uh, we've never really reached any any resolution to it. Obviously, the the puddles are unacceptable. The, the Google Maps thing, I don't know what we do about that, but we could certainly put up signs uh, to indicate the correct way to go, or I don't know, I don't know what we do. I, I'm just a little, a little reluctant, and maybe it makes all the sense in the world, and maybe we should, uh, and maybe we should go ahead. I would uh, be interested in knowing what uh, Randy and Phil have to say. I mean, not, obviously nothing's going to happen tonight. The only decision tonight is to move, start the process. Go ahead, Randy. 
So I uh, I agree, Peter. I'm reluctant to release a full class four road without significant cause. Uh, I haven't seen this area. Um, I'd like to go see it. I think our new foreman should go have a look at this. Um, you know, if this is anything that 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 we even consider, I think I think we need some time to, or I, at least for me to to have it into my headspace. Um, I would need time. To, we're definitely gonna we're definitely gonna do that stuff, Randy, as part of the due diligence process. I mean, this the the just this decision I, tonight, I think, would be to take this recommendation under advisement and start the process. And the process would be uh, maybe the select board with a with the new uh, uh, road foreman takes a field trip out there and takes a look at what it really is, so we know what we're talking about, and also just in general inspect that road in the. In the old days, and unfortunately, I mean the really old days, as I gracefully age, um, you could drive right through that road with not any big problem. I mean, there was that one section with the with the ledge, and you didn't want to have a low slung car, but there was no trouble getting through there. But it's been quite a while since I've been up there. Yes, uh, Victor. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I have a couple of questions and a couple of comments. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't think that we should uh, throw that up um, because a lot of people use it. And uh, there's there's being a uh, an idea that people can't get through there without getting stuck. And I'm sure some people, uh, some vehicles can't. Uh, Charles Pelcher drives through it two or three times a week. And it, the water puddles are not, uh, the water, it's it's water, but it's it's solid on the bottom. And uh, we were going to go up, uh, we were, as you know, uh, things were a little slow and we were going to go up and uh, maybe, and try to uh, run uh, to uh, outlet that uh, water in those ditches and do a little cutting. And uh, I, I gave Adrian a heads up and I don't know if it was Adrian or if it was Michael, but they uh, didn't want us to do that because of what Shane had said. And uh, uh, I got that email from her. I did not get that take from Shane when he was telling me about it. I did not, I couldn't go to that that day. But it brings up the question, if you go out on, uh, if you go out on a private property, aren't you outside of the right of way then? And does I don't I don't think we have to go out far enough to get out of the right of way to trim some of the trees to just get a path. Okay. Okay. I don't know that for sure, but that seemed to be what people were thinking. Yeah. And we are you know, like, it's literally grown in so much now that you can't get through with a vehicle at all. That's not true. Charles goes through. I mean, it, I, it's I, pretty bad though. Mike, no, I, I wouldn't argue that with any of any of the trail committee people in <laughs> And especially, uh, and especially Adrian, I, I don't, I don't want to get into that. But uh, uh, you see, Michael, hold on. Michael, uh, Mike Patterson goes through it quite often with his uh, little Toyota pickup, and I mean, it wouldn't take much work. Uh, at the time that we were approached by the trails committee to go up and look at it, um, it was a different story with our workload. But I mean. Uh, a lot of people have used it, use it, and and uh, it's been mentioned around. And I think the ultimate goal of the uh, trails committee is to close it to all uh, all motor vehicles. And uh, there's a lot of pushback on that right there because a lot of people use it now in the winter time. Yeah, uh, I could see us blocking it off and you know in through to the spring. But this idea that if people go out there and get stuck, that the property owner's got to pull it out, they don't have to pull it out. They, it's nothing says they got to pull it out. And uh, there's nothing to say that we can't put up signs, uh, uh, you know, warning people that uh, it's not passable with a pleasure car or something to that effect. Well, here's what I would, here's what I would suggest tonight. And I think we all need to get up there and take a look at it. And I, I would suggest, uh, we, we set up a time and probably probably July 5th is not the time where that's going to be that's going to be busy and it's right after July 4th and all that but uh, 
some nice sunny summer afternoon, we invite the trails committee and the select board up there for a for a tour and uh, and see what we can see what we can see. I mean, I I, I commend uh, I commend you guys for your interest in your work on this, and uh, I'm certainly at this point not not willing to say no. I just uh, I just think we need to do we need to really look at it and and understand what we're what we're doing I, the, because most of that road, I, and again, I'm just going to the old days, most of that road, we did have that beaver dam problem, but most of that road has been passable. And I don't know what changed that created these puddles where it's just over the years, the roads worn away or washed away and it's created low spots or what's happened. Yes, Michael. So I, I think it's a very good idea, especially with the new road foreman coming on to do exactly that field trip. Um, this came on their agenda really quickly and I appreciate the quick response we got from Sarah and Peter to get this on, but it was really just to start the discussion. We don't expect anything to happen overnight. I mean, this has been in this condition for a long time and this way at least, you know, we will all start to address it and figure out the best way. I think, what used to be passable and these puddles is really not so much, uh, as Vic was pointing out, it's not so much a stream through kind of issue. I think it's just from various vehicles going through and depressing the areas. So it's quite possible the bottom of that, as he says, is solid. But let's go up there and take a look and figure out what the best approach is. Because as, yeah. as it is now, it's, not usable for most purposes. Yes, you can get through it. You can get through it on a bike, you can walk through it and you can drive through it, but it's really not serving any of those purposes particularly well. So something should be done. Yep. Okay. Yep. Randy. So I just have a question for the trails committee. You know, Victor brought up an interesting point and and uh, you know, the the thought of of closing it down permanently to to motorized vehicles, period. Is that is that uh, a goal from the trails committee? No, not at all. We're, our goal is to make trails and we started with the class four roads. Um, and we had every intention of thinking that we would fill that puddle in. So it would just be more, it would be easier to pass through. And it was in the course of that conversation, that meeting that we thought, maybe this is way too much work. And the other, an alternative would be to not worry about the class four world and make it a trail. But, but still to make it even a passable trail, you're gonna have to fill in those low spots, right? I mean, people don't like to wade through water as far as I know. Our solution was to just make it a little, to trim some of the, and it's not even trees, bushes and branches along the side. <laughs> to get like a, I don't know, three foot okay. path okay. To, okay. so you could walk by it and yeah. ride by it. Okay, okay. And, and with the history of the Trails Committee, the goal has never been to prevent motorized vehicles to go wherever they're allowed to go. Le so, you legal know, motorized vehicles. Le le yeah, legal, yes, thank you, Michael, legal. Um, you know, we, we uh, it's never been, discussed it's never put up it's never been a goal of the trails committee since uh it got reconstituted well prior to covid so just just to be very yeah. uh clear so, about that so remind me and i should know the answer to this but i don't know the answer so a legal trail of which we have a number which are i mean class four roads obviously motorized vehicles can go on uh go on class four roads um but what about what about trails? I mean, are people allowed to go on trails with with four wheelers and other motorized, whatever, pickup trucks, mud trucks? I don't think so. Are they on off road dirt bikes? I don't think so. I, I don't know Isn't who you're asking. Walking that? and horses and <clears throat> I, I don't know who that question Sir, is. Sir, do you know the answer to that? Uh, from, I know. What I, from what I recall, and uh, is that there's nothing in the legal trails that says that you can't uh, drive a motorized vehicle over it. It's just that the town is not going to maintain it to that standard for a motorized vehicle. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. 
because okay. it's all this is all on what you're the town's not giving up its right of way the town is just merely saying we're not going to provide any type of maintenance on whatsoever and eventually and that trail is becoming really over you know overgrown eventually people won't be able to go through there at all so i i think the question really perks my ears because michael emphasized legal motorized vehicles and i'm curious to know what his thoughts around the differentiation between the two and based on what sarah just said it sounds like the town doesn't prohibit it can you expand on that michael yeah um i had a brief conversation with peter about this and um i remember i don't know now probably 10 15 years ago when the atv uh, statewide club came to middlesex and asked for permission to use some of the roads and there was a discussion and i think the conclusion was that ATVs would not be permitted on town roads. And I think based on that, in my head, I was also thinking that meant ATVs were not permitted on town trails. I, I have no idea if that's true. And I, I think-, think Peter, there, So there, so we've got a couple of different things we're, we're talking about, but um, I think my understanding is if they are registered and these side-by-side -side things, which are so popular now, can be registered for the road, I believe. I see them with license plates on them. Have to be registered, Peter, and insured. And the fish and game are the ones that, that rule over it. Yeah, but you know, I think probably we could not prevent them. What what the problem is, and we had a and we had a pack of them on East Hill for a while. Which were, which were kids on dirt bikes and they were ripping up and down our class three roads and everywhere they could go on private property here, there and everywhere. And that's a, that was an issue. That seems to have abated at least over in, uh, in my neck of the woods. But you know, if it's, if it's passable to drive one of these vehicles through it, we have to presume somebody's gonna be driving through there. We actually saw a four wheeler on the Davy Trail when we were walking it one evening is somebody who hunts up in those woods was fixing their um, tree stand. So yes, there are um, definitely four wheelers that go up and down those trails. You know, and again, and again, and it's, it's kind of like the snowmobile issue and a lot of these other issues. A big percentage of the people probably ride at reasonable speed, don't respect, don't have, don't have noisy straight pipe mufflerless, <laughs> vehicles that they're flying around on at crazy rates of speed and tearing up the roads but the few that do ruin it for all those who uh ruin it for all those who don't we have not had any complaints that i'm aware of in a long time about whether it's mud trucks or atvs or side-by-sides ripping up our uh, our class four roads or trails yeah victor i think this is a great opportunity uh because i can see some division here but I you know a potential division. Let me put potential in there. But I think it's a great time. I think it's a great time that you, for the trails committee and the town and these people that have spoken up that they uh, would like to use, be able to still use that with their, uh, you know, their dirt bike. Uh, it's not really a dirt, but on off road bike, or even if they wanted to put their four trail, uh, their four pillars or something like that. I, you know, it, it wouldn't be something I'd want to do, but there are people that are around or even people that uh, like to hunt that area that want to be able to go through, uh, you know, saying if they, they get a deer or something, they don't want to have to drag it a half a mile or so. But I think it's a great potential because a lot of those people probably would help you with uh, time and equipment to bring that up so that you, uh, you would be able to use it as your walking trail, riding trail, or, you know, whatever you want. And, um, it, it would be a great, great time to uh, work together on it. Uh, I know, I know some of the people who spoke to me have the potential for, you know, helping uh, the town or helping the trails committee or helping themselves put that into something that's passable and a lot better than it is right now. Well, let's, let's do this folks. Yes, Sarah. I just want to read you the, 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 the class four roads and trails policy that you guys updated in 2017. And the only thing is that the select board may exercise control of trails to ensure their integrity as a public right of way 
which means that you can establish weight limits. <clears throat> you, can, you can prohibit or restrict wheeled vehicle use during mud and snow season, and signs and barriers may use, be utilized to accomplish this permit, so this uh, this purpose. So I just want you to say that we, we haven't, you don't ban it, but you have, the select board has the ability to limit access on trails to on vehicles. Well, and we did, we did last year uh, block that road off in the winter time and during mud time. And I think that helped with some of the problems we've had in the past because no motorized vehicles were going through then and they shouldn't be. <clears throat> so, so let's agree on this. Uh, let's, let's set up again. I don't know the, I don't know the best way to do it. I would suggest our, uh, we have a board meeting on the fifth and then what, like the 19th, Sarah is the next one. Well, my advice is since you're not formally starting the process of downgrading this this portion of the road, uh, you could anybody can. Yeah, my advice is to the select board is to avoid a public meeting, uh, an accidental public meeting, and to simply go there on your own between now and whenever you want to go to the next meet to whatever meeting you want to discuss this. And then, if you want to go through the process, then as a board you have to go together and look at this section. So since you're not formally starting this process, it's possible for people to just meet individually and then you don't have to worry about having a me an accidental meeting because otherwise we have to warn it. The only, thing I'm, the only thing I'm thinking is having us there with the trails committee and with uh, the road foreman and road commissioner is we can stand right there and have a discussion, which I think is a, is a useful process. So can't we, can't we warn a meeting to meet there at a certain, at a certain time, let the neighbors know and yeah, it's a real meeting for the time we're there and then we adjourn and go back to Zoom or back to the town hall or whatever we do. Okay, so do you want to warn that? I mean, how, do other, how do other people feel about this? I, I, I think it's useful, very useful to have people there together and have a discussion right there on the spot, but maybe other, feels, other people feel differently. No, I agree. I just, I just have a question. If you don't make any decisions, does it need to be a warned meeting? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I can't, uh, I can't to get together with uh, Phil and Randy on the street of Montpelier without causing a accidental <laughs> unborn meeting. So anyway, anyway, is, am I, I'm not hearing anybody object. So yeah. does, does that approach make sense to them? And and you know, we should let we should let the neighbor either we we know who some of the interested people are. We should invite them, and. Uh, Maybe uh, Adrian or Liz can make cookies. I don't know, but whatever. <laughs> oh my God, that's so sexist. Jesus. Well, I'll make cookies. I'll make brownies. Hey, I can make cookies. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just, I'm just um, eating. But I, but I really do sincerely think, in terms of, in terms of, before we start the formal process, to have a meeting up there, and you know, if we have 15 people up there, we have 15 people. We stand around for 20 minutes and look at the. Look at the situation and see how grown in the road is and the whole bit, and then take it from there. Peter, that's how we got here and it worked really well. Right. Um, right. Well, I just, I'm, you know, I'm happy people to go up there, they see different things, they this, they that, who knows? Whereas we're all up there together, then we're all up there together. Well, see since you time. have the trails committee here, do you guys want to pick a time? Do you want to pick at five o'clock on the 19th of July or 4 30 or? Uh, hold on, sure. quick, give me give me one quick second here. When I get into when I get into summertime, things get a little crazy for me. Not that I. What, Sarah? What day of the week is the nineteenth? It's a Tuesday. Okay. The nineteenth will work for me. Works for me too. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, what time do you go, What time do you guys want to meet there? So does it work? Uh, What's the earliest we can do it for people's convenience? Does 4.30 work or is that too early? Five o'clock is better for me. I have grandchildren that day. Okay, well, let's say five o'clock and we'll, so we'll, we'll warn it for, uh, for five o'clock and where are, we, where are we gonna meet? We can meet right at the puddle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, At the puddle, okay. At the puddle. And and if you just have a car, you have to park down where that big house is and Joanne Flanagan's um, gate? gate is. Well, because otherwise you might room, get stuck. There's uh, no room, right. room for like one car there though. There's room for a couple, Michael. 
We could okay, we could there's, carpool. There's, there's going to be more than that, but I guess people well, figure out where they You know what I would suggest? You know what I would suggest? We meet at the school and carpool up there. How about that? Does that make yeah, sense? Rodney. Yeah. We can do that. Meet in the Rubney School parking lot. Depending on how friendly you are, I can take six or eight people in my pickup truck if you don't mind riding in the back. Anyway, <laughs> I, I think parking is going to be a problem up there if all of a sudden we have 15 people and we yeah. all show up in our own vehicles. Okay, let's do that then. So let's meet at Rumney at five o'clock. Okay. Rumney School parking lot. And I can contact the um, neighbors who might be interested and yeah. let them know. That'd be We've great. got a list of those people. Perfect. Can we, can we make sure to notify anybody that any property owners that uh, that are adjacent to the class four? Just so anybody along that class four that owns property, can we notify everybody? If we have contact information for them, I would say I would say we do the best we can. Once we once we get to the formal process, if we get that far, then we're going to have to notify them. Yeah, and I don't even know how many people own property along there, so could be three people for all I know. Randy, I think we have most of the names and most of the contacts. Um, I can't guarantee that we have them all. Yeah. And probably, probably Adrian, hold on a minute, Sarah. Probably Adrian, uh, when you contact them, they'll say, are you of any, aware of any neighbors or property owners who aren't on our list? They'll probably know who they are. Okay. That'd be great. Thank you. Yep. We can do that. Yes, Sarah. I just wanted to say I'll contact uh, ANR, which has a vested interest, has to be notified of if, if a road is being downgraded or, or upgraded, and that will satisfy the state requirements. Don't you think we, we can keep them out of that until yeah, we that's a little ahead process. of the game. Mm. All right. I, mean, I I just you know I know what they're going to say. They're not going to want it. They're not going to want it thrown up. I don't know. How do other right. how do others feel? I just I they're just, a huge I, property owner there. Yeah. If they're a property sure. owner, notify, I would notify, notify them. Do what they say. If they say we're absolutely against throwing up the road under any circumstances, I guess they need to let us know. Yeah. I think it's better to know that sooner rather than later. Right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep. Let them know. We'll have quite a party. Adrian. You might yes. not have a select board meeting. Or whatever it is you're doing. <laughs> What'd you say? I said, go back to vacation or whatever it is you're doing. It's vacation. <laughs> I will. Thank you very much. I really appreciate, I really appreciate all of you being here. And, and uh, you know, I really like the idea of, of figuring this all out together and coming up with the best solution. That sounds really good to me. Great. So thank thanks you a lot. All. Okay. Bye-bye. Good evening. Bye. So uh, now, Peter, yes. Peter, just be one last thing before we move on here. Um, I think that's the the 19th, just so you're aware, and I'm sure you are, but that's that's our normal meeting. So when right. we look at the when we look at the agenda for the 19th, just let's keep that in mind. No, well, we're gonna you know we'll 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 warn the meeting for four o'clock at, at Romney. And then we'll either go back to Zoom or if at that time we're meeting in person, which it's unlikely we will be. Five. Uh, yes, Sarah. Five. Five o'clock. Five. Five. You mean five. Five. I'm sorry. Five. Yes. So we should try and limit our agenda that night if we can, Sarah. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Randy. But yes, I was aware that that was our regular meeting. That was one of the reasons for doing it that night, actually. Okay, fire department. Thank you for uh, thank you for patiently uh, waiting. How you doing, Eric? Congratulations in person. Thank you. <laughs> You're in the soup now. Uh, bro. What's that? You're in the soup now. Yeah, yeah. Literally. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, well, I know. We're, we're excited to have you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your uh, thank you for your interest. Thank you very much. It'll be fun. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know if you got a copy of the uh, the the um, update from the fire department or not. Did Sarah get that out or not? I didn't get it. Oh wait. Okay. Well, 
I'll have to check my email. I thought I emailed it to you, but anyway. Um, so to date, we have uh, 32 calls. Um, we've had eight calls over the last month. Um, zero mutual aid out and one mutual aid in. Um, max responders is six, minimum is one for an average of four. Um, engine one has been out seven times, engine six, zero times, tanker one, four times, and rescue one out two times. Um, our calls include um, smoke alarm activation. Um, let's see, we had uh, car fire on the interstate. We had a couple of car versus deers, another CO alarm, um, car into a telephone pole. Um, yeah, another telephone pole and another car versus deer. So we had quite a few accidents. Um, training, we had hose deployment and use. Um, our repairs, we have all five vehicles are state inspected and up to date. Uh, engine six needed some exhaust work and rescue one needed some rust repair and carburetor work. Uh, we purchased a multi gas meter. We received two uh, replacement air bottles that were ordered back in December. And um, as far as the community, on the 13th of June, uh, tanker one and engine one went up to Rumney to visit the kindergartners and for story time and uh, interaction with the kids. Um, right. Yeah, it was a good day. And then uh, Fast Squad, we've had a total of uh, five uh, five calls, and all of them were medical. So that's that's the update. Okay. Uh, questions, anybody? Mm -mm. So the only the only uh, the only question I have just just to kick around is yep. we did get we did receive an updated quote for replacing the. Uh, air bottles and i guess my question is and i don't know how we're going to uh you know we've really re never talked about how we're going to do this arpa thing whether we're going to sit down other than the cb fiber thing and mm -hmm. parse it all out and do it all at once or we're going to do it step by step or how we're going to do it but the cost of those air bottles is only going to go up and if that's one of the things we're considering using the arpa money for uh, my recommendation is we do it sooner rather than later, but yep. I don't want to piecemeal a process too much either. No. Um, I believe that quote, and I, I don't know if you remember or know the number, uh, Eric, but I think it was like $69,000. Yeah, I, I did not see it, Jeff. I think Jeff sent it to you. Yes, he did. Right. Yes, yeah, he did not. I don't believe I saw it. Okay, that, well, it was, right in, it was right in that area. Yeah, I mean, he told me about it, but I don't remember the exact yeah, number. I, I believe when it was last brought up a year or two ago, it was 58,000. Right. 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 So, yeah, that sounds about right then. You know, so it's 69 now, could be 89 by the end of the year. Who knows? I have no idea. Well, with the way things are going, certainly should be. <laughs> but all, <laughs> I'm, be all I'm saying is, as we, as we discussed at our, when we, when we had our discussion about these ARPA funds, you know, safety is something we should really be concerned about. And certainly having having those air bottles properly dated and with a proper certification and mm -hmm. all the all the stuff is an important part of safety. Absolutely. Isn't it more than air bottles? I thought it was turnout gear. Is it uh, or is it just air packs? Well it's, it's it's the packs itself, which comes with masks, regulators, uh the alarm system, the pack itself. I mean it's 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 a big deal. It's it's quite a bit. There were three. I think I think Dorinda, there were three items. There was turnout gear. There were the there were the air bottles, and then there was the rescue truck. Were the three uh, were the Major. three items. I mean, the fire department yeah. could use up the lion's share of our ARPA money if we let them. So I asked I asked Jeff, yeah. what's the most important and what's the most urgent? And he said the air bottles. That's why I yep. asked to get an updated uh, get yep. an updated quote. Yes, Sarah. I have the updated quote here. I can email it to you, Eric. But it's okay. a total. It's a total of sixty nine thousand seven hundred twenty eight dollars and seventy nine cents for um, SCBA. I don't know what that is. Self containing uh, breathing like, apparatus. Breathing apparatus. Okay. Yep. A two cylinders and face piece. So there you go. Yep. Per pack. Per pack. Correct. 
Uh, now, is that quote with comes with the bottles? Because I thought we were going to just get the packs only, Eric. Would that be would that be less? Um. Yes, but I'm not. I I'm not positive if the bottles are interchangeable from the new packs. Yeah, because that's, that's my only question is if they are or not. That when they came in and sh showed us a, the two two demos, we'd have to change the the things for I think where we screw into the bottles, we'd have to get different attachments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I'd have to look into that. I don't remember exactly what we found out with that. I think that you was- You may not have your, your email, but um, I just emailed it to you the proposal, Eric. Okay, thank you. So again, I don't know. Uh, I mean, I, we, don't, we don't need to make the decision tonight, but I think we should make the decision sooner rather than- uh, Yeah, rather than no, later. I agree. Yep. Okay. Um, Jeff will be back the 26th. I will touch base with him and see where he's at with it. Well, he's going to probably need three weeks to recover after a month on the motorcycle. <laughs> I'm sure he will. <laughs> and it seems, it seems like the select board should get on the uh, future agenda to, you know, to discuss, you know, ARPA funds and include this type of stuff and, no, no we just... circle back. Yeah, we should circle back to the ARPA funds. I agree, I agree Randy. I mean, yeah. time is time is whistling by. The other the other update, which is not a fire department issue, but just while I'm thinking about it, is we learned today that we did not receive the planning grant um, for the uh, looking into the question of what we do about the town hall. So you know, we're we're going to be. Uh, thinking about whether we need to use some of the ARPA funds to do some kind of a reduced planning project on the town hall, I think. Although I've not, I tried to reach out to uh, Christian today. He had a conversation with, uh, with, the, uh, with the person whose name, of course, I can't now remember who called me today. Um, but she's a person that he's been, he's been working with. Um, they have another, I mean, they, they really liked our grant proposal, everything else. It was just a question. There wasn't, there was only $120,000 and there were five requests for 50 to 60,000. So there wasn't enough money to go around the, one of the, one of the ones that got funded, this was the third time they'd applied. So she encouraged me and I presume she encouraged Christian to apply again. And the process would be apply in September and here in here in November, but anyway. Well, we, we've got more information to gather before we make a decision on how we go with that. And it really doesn't have anything directly to, to do with the fire department at all, but it does have to do potentially with the ARPA funds. Uh, anything else for the uh, fire department? That's all I have right now. Okay. Any, any Thanks, guys. Uh, Eric, before you go, any growth in numbers? Uh, not, of, not as of yet. No, we're still at the same. Uh, yeah. Still waiting, uh, but uh, in this the board already knows about we got uh, a full, um, tell me, uh, think of the words, Eric, uh, grant for new radios too, for outdated ones. Well, yeah, we're, yeah, we're working with the Middlesex Community Fund for that to do, to replace our handheld radios. That's right, I forgot all about that one. So there is, there is some other positive news, which yeah. is now that our uh, now that our chief is going to be working in town, he's going to be more readily available for fire calls during the day. A good thing. I would think so. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. in all seriousness, it is a good thing. I mean, that's one of our yeah. real uh, that's one of our real challenges. So, mm -hmm. yes, Sarah. Just for the minutes, could you explain about the uh, grants of the community, the Middlesex Community Fund for the handheld radios? So the Middlesex Community Fund, uh, I reached out to them. Uh, they Well, first they reached out to us about helping us out. And um, so then I contacted them and we gave them a quote of replacing eight of our handheld radios because our radios are quite outdated. They're over 20 years old. Jeez. And um, so they, they are willing to do that, but they had to come up with some of the funds. And we are also going to do some of the fundraising for that as well. Great. Thank you. Yeah, I actually got a fundraising letter from the Middlesex Community Fund. Probably we all do. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I think the radio is like what, Eric? 1100? 1100? A piece. A piece. Yes, it was $9,300. Oh, 
Wow. Communication is important. The, the only yes. up, up in numbers, I would say, Eric, is with the new classes we do, we now have uh, one, two, three, five best squad members now, Eric, as well. Yes, but they're the still yes, we have we have we have two extra fast squad members that respond as a uh, not up to the EMT level, but they do respond for assisting the EMTs. And uh, but they're also members of the fire department. So we really didn't increase numbers for the department itself. Just just for responding people. Yeah, that's great. Yep. That's great. OK, thanks, guys. And uh, in your in your meetings and your discussions, you're we're still marching down the road to uh, absolutely in September, right? Absolutely. Have, it, have any any concerns or issues come up at any of your meetings? I haven't heard of anything that's that's uh, a major major concern at all yet. Okay. Well, what I what I would suggest is if we're going to make the decision and and. Uh, September that we put it on the agenda uh, in August and have a little bit more of an in-depth discussion about what you know I, I believe and correct me if I'm wrong Sarah I believe all that has to happen is is you guys you guys have a meeting agree and we have a we have a meeting as a select board and agree and we we do it but uh, we did talk about uh, how we're going to inform the town and and go through that process, whether we're going to have some kind of a public meeting or or what we're going to do, but we need to do something to uh, to inform the public in the process. So, yep, let's not forget to do that. No, we will. Okay, thanks, thanks, guys. All right, we Thank appreciate you. it. Thank Good night. You. Yep. Highway Department update. Victor, mind, mind if I sit in on this? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Get used to it. Would, would like you to sit <laughs> what do you want to know for? <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm just nosy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, that's a good point. And uh, uh, Eric, and uh, I can give you a call. Uh, I mean, we can touch bases. I don't think you just want to turn the switch on the 5th oh. of uh, July. And, no, we do not. We're willing to keep you updated with what, what I know and what's going on. Yep, uh, sounds good. Yeah, I would I would encourage you guys to to work that out, and uh, as as we go forward, we can figure out what the process was. But what we were doing in the past, Eric, is asking the foreman to appear at one of our meetings a month. But you and Victor can work out whether that's you know the best way to do it. But uh, yep. it seemed to work. It seemed to work well in the past. Okay. Okay, Victor, you're up. All right. Um, I guess uh, a big thing is, uh, you know, we have one truck that's uh, one of the big tandems is down at the garage, has been and will be for a little while, uh, waiting for uh, some work on the uh, transmission cooler. And then the other truck overheated, but <clears throat> we uh, contacted uh, the garage. Uh, very bootsies and uh, they're supposed to get the part and have it running tomorrow. Um, we're going to continue to uh, excavate uh, in, uh, the berm and ditches on center road, get ready for that paving job uh, with a rented truck for maybe one or two days. And uh, hopefully the other one will be back tomorrow afternoon. Can't promise that. And speaking of the uh, uh, of the center road project, uh, I don't know if everybody knows, but uh, Jay Merrill uh, is going to do the uh, pipe crossings, and I think he's going to. I think he's still here. He's going to start somewhere around the first of July. And he's here. Yes. He's here somewhere in there. Yep. And uh, he's unmuting himself. There he is. The week of July 4th, so like Wednesday the 6th. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's what was my thought. Okay. I thought that's what he's going to do. Um, speaking of that project, and I spoke to Dorinda before the meeting, and I don't, I think it was. Uh, I got it. 
Okay. $251,304. Is that what you were asking how much Hutchins was? Yeah, what was that? Does it does it say what the width is? Oh, um, it should say right at the side there. I, I apologize. 20, 24 foot. Okay. And we really don't need 24 feet, I don't think, unless, because <clears throat> uh, it's only 22 down there now, but which would save a lot of tonnage. But no matter what, the select board and all, everybody's listening has got to know that it doesn't matter what they quote us here. It's it's by the ton, and you know it could run over or it could run under. It's it's not a, a steadfast value. The sooner they do it, the sooner they do it, the better. I would tell you. Okay, so, so with you saying that, yeah, the uh, I think the uh, the uh, the uh, recycling of the uh, of the roadway. Uh, is up to $38,193.54. So do you have a figure for that before? That's reclaiming? Reclaiming, yep. $27,777.12. So it's up 11,000 bucks already. But here's the real kicker with that 24 foot paving, it's $316,794 with, uh, with, uh, the new asphalt price for July. Can you repeat oh. that, Victor? Repeat that slower. Uh, sure, sure, sure. It's uh, the reclaiming is uh, right now is thirty eight thousand one ninety three eighty four. That probably won't change too much. The the asphalt. Uh, the, the paving project is uh, $316,794.08. And I don't think that includes McCullough Hill Road. Um, it didn't before. Um, like, like I said, I just got this quote about five, 10 minutes before you, we went on air. And Vic, what is, when you say paving project, what is that, what is that 300,000 figure cover exactly? That that in, that in, that that is the two and a half inch base course paving at twenty four feet wide, and an inch and a half top course at twenty four feet wide. It's and, just uh, for the pa the pavement. Just, just yeah. for the pavement. Just for the just pavement. for the asphalt. Mm -hmm. Just for the asphalt. Oh, right, two minutes concrete pavement. That's the technical term. So. And it went, it went from $74 a, a ton to $94 a ton. Yeah. Can we circle back to the, to the 22 versus 24 feet? Yeah. Um, I'm sure the bicycle riders in town and other people would love to see it 24 feet wide. But uh, my take is if it's always been 22, if that meets the state standard for a class three road, we go with 22. I don't think we need to make it wider for two reasons. Number one, if we make it wider, people are only going to drive faster. And number two, I think we can save the money. And I think having a nice, smooth 22 foot wide road would be fine. But I measured it the other day and it was 22 feet between McCullough Hill Road and where the guardrail starts. Yep. Would we have to move the guardrail back if we went to 24 or no? It'd be very, very close. Uh, my recommendation is, I mean, what do you think, Victor? 22? I don't want to move that guardrail. You know, it's, it'd be like, a, you know, probably be, uh, I don't know, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 to put a new guardrail up. 22. I say, I say 22, unless anybody yeah. disagrees. With the price creep, I think, you know, trying to, trying to manage the, the overall impact and, Cutting back to the 22 is a smart move. I mean, it's it's well, everything. I don't, back, I don't think we're cutting back, Randy. It's 22 now, so we're. No, no, no. That's what I'm saying. But the quote was for the 24 feet, so yeah, cutting yeah. back from what they yeah. quoted us on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that okay with you, Phil? You're good with that. Yeah, I think that's the way to go. Okay. Ah. So I'm sorry to keep coming back on this, but you're talking 316,794 also includes the labor to put down that asphalt, correct? Yeah, the machine, the labor, the install, everything, yeah. Just, okay. Install. That's a total estimate for doing 
the uh, from Hutchins for doing the reclaiming and paving the project. Does that three hundred sixteen thousand include the thirty eight thousand for the reclaiming? No, that's just a pay. No. Okay, so the thirty eight thousand is on top of that, and that's also doesn't include Jason's culverts. That's Correct. also separate. Correct. That's separate. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Just trying to get it all together. Yeah. Okay. So, Victor, will you go back to Hutchins for a new, um, a new estimate or whatever, or we just, we just reduce the numbers based on this? Um, well, what you're saying is if we go from tw or 24 down to 22 feet, is that what you're yeah. saying? Right, yeah. So it'll be different numbers than what we have if the amount, or should we just change the price per? No, you, you know, just change. Just, and... Right. Like I said at the beginning, uh, and I'm not, it's, it's uh, if you cut down two feet, it, uh, the length of the job times two feet times four inches is uh, quite a few tons. Mm, yeah. To get that for you or. Uh, yeah, and I and I don't think they care whether they they uh, EJ said the other day whatever we had if you want to do it twenty two we'll do it it's all by the ton it's all by the ton and if you got somebody with a fat finger and uh, putting it down a little thick you're going to pay more if anybody you understand what I'm saying the guy running on the back of the paver they got screws and it makes it go up or down and but anyways. Uh, but it should come out close. It should come out close. It's about five on every sure, hundred feet. Let's make sure they know it's 22, not 24. Oh, yes. yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Jason? It's about five ton every hundred feet. Five ton every hundred feet. Yeah. Wow. Or about $500 every 10 feet. Expensive. Fifty. Four hundred four hundred and seventy dollars at ninety-four dollars a ton. I mean approximately it's a twenty-five, twenty-six thousand dollar savings, roughly. Yeah. <clears throat> no, it's real money. It's real money. Of course, of course, my original proposal was turn it back to a gravel road, then we'd save some real money. <laughs> uh, that doesn't include the McCullough approach, I don't I don't believe. And that's another uh Oh, at seventy-four dollars a ton, it was uh, thirty thousand. Yeah, big money. Big money for a little town. So, so hey. Victor, uh, can I ask that if you if you're going back to to Hutchins to have them provide uh, a different estimate for the twenty-two feet, can you also ask them to update the McCullough Hill piece as well? Sure. Thank you. So, um, you have anything else, Victor? Yeah. Keep going. Okay. Well, I got to write down Randy's question. Okay. Good. Write down Randy's question. Okay. So, you were talking about moors. You want to talk about moors tonight, Peter? Sure. I do. And um, so, I talked to uh, Pete's Repair in Morrisville, and they rent them. And uh, the gal, Michelle, called me back today. She's in charge of all the rentals. And she said that they didn't have one. They wouldn't be able to do it until September. But uh, anyways, long story short, she called me back and she talked to uh, Jason. Uh, and uh, that's her, one of the owners. And they're going to put on a new, uh, new tractor and a new boom mower. Uh, and they can do it in July. Uh, couple of weeks in July or a week in July or two weeks, whatever you want. It's $3,000 a week for 50 hours. At 50 hours for 3,000 or 60 bucks an hour. And so remind me, Dorinda, what did we have in our budget for outside mowing? 7,000, I believe. 7,000. Okay, for the rental. And Victor, I'm assuming transport is over and above that three thousand. So right now, it's 140 bucks an hour, 
And they said, if you can get somebody to come move it for you, uh, because they're using MSB, the people that haul the junk to uh, Coventry, and they said they're wicked slow. They couldn't even quote you a price because they don't know. And uh, maybe we can, uh, she said, if you have somebody that can move it and move it faster, it would save you money. Yeah, we're, 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 about, we're about 20, 28 miles from Morrisville, uh, 30, say 30 miles to the town garage. Yeah. Well, I think we should, I think we should sign the thing up. It's within the budget and that sounds like a good, sounds like a good one. I mean, we're one still going to be out of hand, so we have, we have that issue, but uh, that's certainly a lot more attractive than what we were talking about at our last meeting. Yeah. Do you want one week or two weeks? I think two. I think do it. Do what we plan to do. Okay. What do you, what do you think, guys? Is July fine with uh, everybody, like even Eric? Yeah. Okay. What size tractor is it, you know? Um, I, she didn't tell me what the new one was, but the yeah. it's a it's a Mag, Mag, uh, Massey Ferguson fifty seven ten. Okay. So what's that? Sixty horsepower tractor? Probably. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And um, so it's not overly heavy then. No. No. No, but it's a full size, full size real tractor. Right. It's not. It's not Phil's weed whacker. Let's put it that way, Phil. Well, I was thinking about transport purposes. Yeah, but I would. I would think but the boom. Know, the boom makes it oversized by just a little bit. Eric. Yeah. yeah. They, so you have to put up your oversized signs. Yep. I did get that, and then uh, I guess our truck is coming. The new. The new truck. July, but it's. Do you have a date? Huh? You have a date? I don't have a date. No. But I guess it's going right straight to Tenco. They're still talking with. Uh, they're still interacting with Shane. But, uh, well, we should we should get that changed. Yeah. 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 We're trying. We're trying, and. Uh, it's not that isn't an easy thing when you when they've dealt with them for so long. But and then stop and think about it, guys. So they talk to me in two weeks, they're gonna really want to talk to Eric. So anybody that calls me, I hope you don't mind. I'm gonna I can give them your cell phone or that's fine. Are you gonna use your cell phone for the town or is the town gonna buy you a new one? No, I, I got my own. Okay. All right. Bill, you'll set up Eric's new email. I will. Okay. I mean, I put a note to do it tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Um, is there anything else, Peter? Not that I know of. No, I don't. I don't think so. I mean, I was gonna. I was gonna ask about the new truck. I mean, that's that's gonna be a relief when we get that. But it's probably gonna be what six weeks at Tenco, something like that. Something like that. Yeah. And that's down in uh, Hopkinton, um, New Hampshire. I know. Mm -hmm. That's not so good. We're going to have hundreds of miles on our truck before oh. we can see the thing. Oh, oh yes. And then, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, the John Deere grader, we, uh, uh, they weren't, I, I contacted them and they, you know, they want to get paid to come and uh, anything they do for it. And then, the uh, so the guy, his name is Tim Yando. He's the uh, service manager at United in Williston. And uh, he, on Friday, he was uh, less than helpful, but he wanted us to call, have the operator call. So I went over yesterday, Monday, and uh, hung around there for when Jay came in and uh, I finally got Jay to call and he talked with him and told him what the issue was. And uh, the guy would say, it didn't say anything. Uh, Jay did say that the, uh, that the uh, salesman, uh, Justin Jeanette, had promised them that they would straighten all this stuff out that they had known since, you know, very early on when we bought it. 
And the guy acted like he was accepting that, that being the Tim Yando. And then um, they asked about Jason, and I can't pronounce the guy's last name, who was the, the service manager and has now moved on to uh, a different division of uh, United. And so they, well, he said, I'm sorry. He said, I want to make you happy. Now, I don't know what that means, but he's supposed to be getting back to us. And uh, I assume that he's asking uh, somebody that is uh, uh, mechanically IT uh, trained for John Deere to tell us uh, what the scoop is. Although that when the guy came to uh, uh, work on the uh, walk and roll, who was a certified John Deere mechanic, tech, said that he knew nothing about the, uh, about the goings on of shifting that uh, machine or the electronics in that machine. He said he had been not trained in it. He knows nothing about it. So maybe they got somebody else. And uh, the only other thing was uh, we had a conversation with Brian Redmond this afternoon, and he was really upset that uh, we, we graded Notch Road and uh, we didn't go up his driveway, which is a class four road and grade that. And I just, and he's upset because we did not bring him over some gravel. And I told him I did not have a truck to, uh, to do that. And that we weren't really grading uh, class four roads and that we couldn't really go up there uh, File said he didn't dare to go up there because there's nothing but stones. And then if, if he grades it, it, either, it goes into the ditch. So um, I'm have sure. We graded, have we graded that in the past? I don't believe we graded that. He in the said past. the last time, and I don't know if Paul's still here or not. Yeah, he is. And uh, he said the last time that uh, that was done, uh, Paul did it a couple of years before he got done, something like that. And I explained to him that the new grader was a little bit bigger than the old one. Plus, we have the walk and roll hook to it. And I don't, we're not going to go up that road. And we can't go up his driveway, which, um, and, and, and Files just has to back out with that, with that, all that uh, walk and roll and everything on it. It makes it pretty difficult. Why would we? I'm a little confused about why we, why he would think we were supposed to do it and bring him gravel in the first place. Because it's a class four road and he, he works for ANR and ANR knows that you're supposed to service that road. Uh, yeah. And Nick, I, I don't know if you guys can hear me at all. Yeah. Yes. Uh, um, so Peter, that, that was kind of a collaboration with, with the trails committee and, and the state up there. We, if you remember, we were trying to strike a happy medium with the state because of the complexity of a class four road leading up to the town forest uh, and state land as well. So we, we thought it, it would be in our best interest as a town to just keep that in somewhat decent shape, which is why we, we, maintained that to a little bit better standard just so we didn't have to go through the effort of potentially having to upgrade that to class three that was kind of the intention up there especially knowing we had you know kind of a vested interest up there with the town for us so so paul do you know where i mean there was all and i was up there at a couple of meetings we walked around we had some pleasant walks in the woods up there talk, talking about that with a and r and parking lots and all kinds of different things. Did that all just sort of go off into the wind somewhere? I, I think that to be honest, once I know once I had had left the town, um, you know, we'd all had some really good interactions with with Tim. Vic, you probably even remember his name, uh, kind of in charge of the WMAs. Really, really nice guy. Um, yeah. They were willing to throw some money towards the town. Um, and I'll be honest, I, I, I think once I left, I, I think that might have kind of fallen off because of, you know, obviously other projects kind of take precedent. Um, you know, I, I know the guys had done uh, the parking lot expansion up there, but that was right at the very end of my term with the town. But otherwise, there was some good momentum and, and good intentions on in everybody's uh, part up there. And I, I just think it didn't come to fruition was really all, all that happened with changing of the guards. Well, when Shane point, came, 
I'm when sorry. Dave came in, we met with Steve down at Steve's house, and uh, he showed us what they had for a plan, which was actually to fix up that existing wildlife management turnaround. And as Paul says, they were going to go up a little bit farther and make another one. But, right. that's, that's what I remember. What's that? That's yeah. what I recall. And and you know and 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 uh, Steve was going to work with us on it, and uh, you know it, it it not Steve's fault. It's not you know it just it had so much going going into the new transition that it just never happened. Yeah, and, and nobody's ever said any more about it uh, as far as this date. Uh, uh, as far as the state guy. Was that Austin, Paul? No, it was um Tim. Um, no, it's Tim Appleton is is Tim his Appleton. Name. And, and, and a very really yeah, really nice guy. And like I said, yeah. they even had some funds that were gonna be available that that they were gonna be able to apply and knock on wood actually uh, up on uh, Barnett Hill. We had done the same thing, Vic, if you remember right. that. They right. they actually contributed gravel funds to that. And again, it, it was really just protecting the town's best interest. And, you know, for us, the biggest deal was, was the money portion for material, an asset that we didn't have. And we had the equipment and manpower at the time. Right. Exactly. And then we did go back, uh, Paul, uh, the following spring from when you got done uh, and Shane went up there or well, Files went up there with the grader and stuff. And, and uh, they did some more work and they actually did some ditching because the fun. Mm -hmm fall there when they did it i was after you were gone it was like almost in deer season there they were doing it and uh they they were putting gravel in but the the water didn't have any place to go because there was no ditch so we sure. went Shane went back in the spring and and uh actually bruce fitch did uh did some work with a wheel loader backhoe yep well yeah, as, as far as time that we we circle back to those guys because that was a that was a worthwhile project to undertake. And, you know, COVID and everything, everything probably in our staffing situation, probably everything got put on the, uh, the back burner, but it's time to, time to turn up the heat, maybe. Maybe so, we got COVID funds for it, Peter. Yeah, there you go. B believe so, it or not, the, the funding from that came from COVID funds when, when the outdoors all of a sudden became popular again, the first summer of COVID. Um, that's, that's where all that federal money was coming down from. So I wouldn't be surprised if that timeline has, has since expired. Yeah. Now they, from what I hear, they've got big pots of money they haven't been able to spend, but I don't know how accurate that is. Anyway, we should circle back with them at some point in time. So the other quick thing I have that relates to the roads is um, circling back to the uh, issue of hiring our fourth road crew member uh, we thought a couple of the applicants for the uh, foreman's position might be interested in the road crew position. Is that true or not? Or there were go ahead. There were, there were two individuals that that had said they would think about uh, what that looked like. Um, I'm not convinced that they're what the town needs. Uh, I don't know what the feelings of the other the other interview uh, committee folks are, but, um, you know, that's my two cents. Well, my, my only question is, should we, should we re re advertise that? What's the, what's the next step in terms of getting a fourth person? Because, uh, you know, now we're back to roadside mowing. That's going to, you know, use one person for, uh, the better part of two weeks, et cetera, et cetera. And it'll be winter before we know it. So, should we? I, I, I believe that we, yes, we should be continuing to post that position. Okay. Well, we never stopped, did we really? Uh... <laughs> no. We haven't we stopped. stopped. We put it, we've put it everywhere. Haven't stopped. Yeah. Front Forge Forum, uh, the, all the state sites, the, yeah. even Indeed, we're getting, I mean, we're getting crazy little uh, fishing expeditions from I'm a I'm a FedEx delivery driver in you know Pawtucket <laughs> Rhode Island maybe I'll be on the road crew it's like you know stuff like that right. I know that's yeah. no surprise to anybody that's that's in this meeting but uh you know I've been talking with some some uh folks from other town uh road crews and and foremans and whatnot and we continue to not be the only ones in this boat 
Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> no. And, and uh, my, my recollection of that, Peter, is, uh, you know, uh, uh, two people, uh, uh, two people said they might be interested if, uh, if, if, uh, the, if certain circumstances was met, maybe, maybe I, I'm, I'm putting words out that I'm not really sure, you know, as far as money or the other thing was it depended who, uh, the new foreman was, and we assured him that all the candidates were just wonderful, so he shouldn't have any problem with that. Of course. <laughs> we well, all, all I'm suggesting, all I'm suggesting is that we just need to keep our keep our uh, fingers to the grindstone, as they say, and try and recruit somebody. And Eric, you know, you're you're involved in this process. I mean, we yeah. did. What is it we we implemented for somebody who finds somebody? Dorinda, what did we agree to do? Thousand oh, bucks. How yeah. much? A thousand bucks. A thousand bucks. Yeah. For somebody, for somebody who comes and stays. So if you can find somebody, there's the Christmas budget gets funded. Yeah, I believe it was five hundred up front when they got hired, and five hundred at six months, if I rem yeah. remember correctly. Yeah. yeah, that sounds right, Randy. Yep. And that's that's yeah. not just, that was just on the road crew member. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At the foreman. Yeah. Okay. So I have I have a couple things, uh, Victor. If you're if you're done with what you've brought to the meeting. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, the uh, the first one was um, I was looking through the uh, the warrants and I've heard discussion and and rumor about. Um, some trees that were taken down down here on center road because they were they were up near power lines or something like that and i'm wondering you know if anybody if anybody can talk more specifically about that i've gotten little tidbits of of information but fifty two hundred dollars for taking down some trees uh that, that i feel like should be the power company company's responsibilities um are I, I'm questioning why why we're doing stuff like that? Yeah, um, it's it's my understanding uh, that uh, that was something that was uh, in the works. Um, I don't know if it was before you got done, Paul, or right after. Uh, anyways, the trees were there. The power company wouldn't touch them. And uh, they uh, so we had that fund, uh, and uh, uh, Shane thought uh, at some point way back, Shane thought that this isn't something. I mean, uh, people have alluded to the fact, or Sarah was alluding to the fact that we just did it this week, and I explained to her we didn't do it, or within the last month, or recently. It was quite a while ago that it was put in. The guy was hired to do it. And then he did come in on the 15th and, uh, of June and do it. Um, the reason that it uh, was expensive, they had to use a, they had to use a bucket truck and uh, you know, they had to, uh, it was quite a lot of work to take them down. Those weren't small trees and you got two more that you should take down across the street of the same, same type of uh, swamp uh, willow there. And so, it was in the works for quite a while, and and uh, it was in the uh, I believe it was in the budget. But why? I guess my question is why are why is the town responsible for taking trees down that are that are, you know, theoretically? Why is the town dangerous? responsible, Randy? Why is the town responsible to go cut up a tree that falls down beside the road? I mean, it, it the, the tree the tree was falling into the road. The issue, yeah, the issue, Randy, that I that I remember is, and we've had this happen, it happens periodically where we have a, where we have a big tree, which is leaning into the road. And the question is, do you wait till it falls down some night blocks the road or do you, do you take care of the tree? We've never had, we've never had much luck getting the power company to take care of trees. They'd rather have the tree take out the power line than they'll come and fix the power line. So what, so what I'm hearing is that the issue wasn't that it was near power lines, that it was dangerous and it was going to fall into the road so i believe there's, that's the there's case. yes two, two, and 
this was before or this would have happened after me guys so i i don't have any interest in it but i i think the best word to describe this that our insurance company has used with a lot of things like like dangerous potholes is tort liability uh no knowing about a, a potential hazard that has not happened yet but but we recognize it as a hazard and and we knowingly do nothing about it and that that could very well be what this was about but um, we've always had a tree budget for trees that were out of our, our ability. Uh, we, we've had guys come in and do it plenty of times before. These particular trees I can't speak about, but uh, that, that could very well be if, if there was a danger to the traveling public. Uh, that tort liability is a fancy word that, that's been thrown around a lot on a, on a legal end when it comes to town business. So. You okay with that one, Randy? I, you know, I was one to raise questions about this because what Paul told me when I was a young town clerk, and I use that term loosely, is that when people call and say there's a tree leaning over the road, that we should say we don't have the equipment to remove those trees. And I have had numerous calls from people, and I can think of somebody on Government Hill Road who's been who's been worried about trees, people all over the place. And, you know, that's been my standard answer. Now, I, it's fine that we, we rent cherry pickers to, to take down trees. And I don't remember that ever happening before. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe my memory's spotty or maybe I just didn't, wasn't that plugged into the road crew. But I don't remember us renting ch cherry pickers to take down trees and, do, and have tree removal service. Maybe. We definitely, maybe. We definitely hire tree removal services. Yeah. We, we have. Hire tree. Yeah. We, yeah. We've never rented but, but hired it out numerous times on trees. Uh, you know, we were pretty well equipped with the excavator and snatch blocks and uh, all of that stuff. But but dangerous stuff, we would always call FARS or somebody like that. They would scale it. We would usually clean it up. I don't know if these cle uh, trees were cleaned up by us or not, but we would typically use our chip or our equipment. We would just have them put it on the ground for us, the dangerous part. In, in this case, they didn't. They took it all. They went down. They went down to get it and it was gone. So they... The uh, Charles went down to get it and it was gone. So the wood, the wood was gone. The wood is gone. Yes. Yeah, I mean, in the future, Sherry, uh, uh, Sarah, uh, really, uh, I mean, I don't mean any offense, but you probably should just revert if anybody's complaining about a tree, either to myself or Eric. I will absolutely do that. All right, well, I think that's the best solution. And I yep. think the other thing is, uh, I think the select board and the town uh, officials. You know, every time we do something, it seems like somebody wants to second guess us and that gets old. And I don't think anybody, I don't think you guys would like it. We get enough of it from the our public. Uh, our, we don't need to, we don't have- well, it, to, be, to be fair, Victor, that's what we're here for. That just, it's, if I see something come across at a $5,200 uh, line item that the town's right. paying for, and I'm being right. told that it's, and I and I'm and I'm hearing that it's because it's close to power lines. Why wouldn't I question that? Well, I think that's it. I think you've just exposed it right there. It's it's discussed among. Uh, I don't mind it coming out at the select board, but I've heard it 50 times uh, since the bill hit the bill hit the uh, hit uh, uh, Cheryl's desk. So. Well, yes. If you want to know something, if you don't want to wait for a select board meeting, call me up. I'll tell you exactly. I mean, this, we hey, this, look, is, the, look, look, look. this is the forum here's, that here's needs the, to be asked. Randy, 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 just hold on for a second. Look, absolutely, this is the forum where it should be discussed. My memory of how we have handled this in the past, and as far as I know, it's worked pretty well in the past, although every time we cut a tree, there's somebody who doesn't want the tree cut. I understand that. But, but if somebody calls about a tree, it gets referred to Gary, who's the tree person. And at the same time, the road crew, when they're traveling around, whether they're plowing snow or cutting brush or resurfacing roads, if they see a tree, they make a note of it and bring it to our attention. And if it's something they can take care of, we say, great, take care of it. If it's something where we need to hire somebody, we agree, hire somebody. But we don't want to wait for trees to fall down in the road. We've had enough close calls over the years, and we'll continue to have more. We've got a lot of trees. Wait till all these ash trees start dying. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but to, to cut down every tree that everybody wants cut down 
is is an unreasonable standard. But to cut down trees where there's a real hazard, that's something we need to take care of. And sometimes, sure. sometimes Randy, you know, in, in this case, it was a long delayed, long delayed process, and you, you got in on the tail end of it. And I'm sorry about that. But uh, yeah. Well, I mean, pay attention, I, been... you need to pay attention to trees all the time, but it's not because we don't take down trees because of the power lines or the phone lines. We take down trees because in our view, meaning the road crews view or the select boards view, and I can remember calling Paul a couple of times over the years and saying, hey, I noticed this tree on Brook Road or this or that. Take a look at it. Let me know what you think. You know, that kind of thing. Anyway. Sure. I mean, I've been sitting in these meetings religiously for more more than a year before I even sat on the board and I've never heard this come up um I don't think and it's I do the last and, year. I, and, it and, hasn't. It hasn't. and and again Victor this is an attack on anybody whether it's the road crew no, or, no. You or, or how you're feeling but this is the forum that these questions need to come out in so well I apologize I, if you're taking that as as confrontation I am not That's taking not it. how it's meant I am not taking it uh uh Randy, that way, but I think you also go back in the minutes, you'll listen that uh, it's been pointed out to us that uh, you didn't want, uh, the select board didn't want us coming down with every little decision and passing it in front of it. They wanted us to uh, make up our, you know, have our own agenda. Uh, so, you know, in this case, uh, you know, Shane did. And uh, I mean, he, he uh, obviously, uh, called the guy and uh, there's nothing wrong with the guy that did it. He's an expert. And uh, so, you know, it just seems to us like it's damned if we do and damned if we don't. So it's, it's not, it's, it's not the person that was hired for it. If, if it's a, if it's a danger, it's one thing. I believe that this board needs to be very clear on the perceptions that are taking place. These trees were cut on Steve Martin's property ordered by his son, that is something that that highway department foreman should have aired out so that there was no perception of, of any kind of conflict there. And I'm sorry, but I have a huge issue with this. Okay, so the we- The whole reason that I got involved in this process, we need some transparency and nobody that's, nobody that's had a, a decision-making voice in this is here, but I, I will say that, you know, I have an issue with it. I just want to say the bill came through saying they took down trees because it was impeding power lines. And who so wrote the bill? That's how it came up. The person who cut the tree, evidently. I don't right. know. Well, he's but not that's, in our that's jurisdiction. what's creating that's what's creating these issues is the words power lines. That's all. That's what came through on the bill. Yeah, but he doesn't work for us, really. I mean, it doesn't have anything to do with the decision. That, I don't know who told him that. Right, but that's what I'm saying. That's what's, it was just not clear. He's looking at something that's saying that we're taking down trees under power lines because that's what the invoice says. And that's what Sarah saw. Well, they definitely were underneath. They were mixed into the power lines. They they definitely were. And as far as I know, the uh, the power company said they wouldn't take them down. I've never known the power line to take down take down any trees. If there's a tree on the power line, they will come deal with that tree. But if it's standing, they won't or leaning, they won't take care of it. Well, look, the, the, I I just I mean I I think we're I think we're beating a dead horse here. Right. The, the process, and, and, and Randy, I want to be sure we're, we're clear on this, is, you know, we do not want to micromanage the highway department budget. We want to trust our, our foreman and our road commissioner to make decisions about how they spend the money, whether it's which roads they grade or which potholes they fill or whatever. On the other hand, if it's a major bill, and certainly if it isn't in the budget, they need to be coming to us, but they shouldn't be coming to us about every tree that needs to be taken down. I don't. I absolutely that. agree with 95% of what you just said, but given the specifics of this situation, I feel like it should have been put out in the open. Well, 
the good news is that situation is resolved. Absolutely. You don't have to worry about that anymore. And, you know, I will, I will say again that, you know, we could have done things better with regard to that whole situation in hindsight, but we didn't. So uh, we got what we got in a few situations, but we're past it now. And I do appreciate your concern. I mean, we're all concerned. That's, the, that's exactly what we're here for, is to make sure we're doing our best to manage the resources of the town the best we can. Absolutely. Yep. Okay, Dorinda. I've got two questions before we move on with the highway. Um, first of all, on financing for this truck, should we be, if this is coming in July and it's now the third week of June, am I supposed to be seeking out financing for this? And will it be one payment to Kenworth and one payment to Tenko or I mean, I, I need some guidance on how to move forward here. So I think the quick answer is yes, we need to be ready. So when they say the truck's here, we need a check. We're not running around like chickens with our head cut off. And in the past, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Victor or Paul, maybe you know, but I think it is one one bill from the uh, one bill from the person who provides Tenco. the truck and one bill from Tenco. Yes, historically they've they've been two different bills. They are they are two separate. Um, basically, they're they're two separate vendors. So we we would solicit different quotes uh, for each aspect of the truck build. Well, we've got we've got the quotes, I guess. No. So we would have one loan though, and then just pay two people out of it. Yes. Right. So I need to be sure that these final numbers that I go out to get the quote on that these are going to be final numbers, both from Kenworth and Tenco. And then I'll start that. And now's a good time before the interest rates continue to go up. Yep. Um, and my other thing is, um, as far as Gary, is he all done effective June 30th? And I mean, if so, who is the liaison to that? So we haven't talked about that. Um, right. I would, I would suggest that Gary should at least stay around for a few days to uh, show Eric around. But I don't know whether you think that's necessary or not, Victor, or how you feel about it, Eric. I, I told Eric that I would, whatever he wanted, uh, I'm sure he knows a lot more about it than I do anyways, but uh, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, but uh, I'm willing to, uh, you know, uh, I told him when we were, negotiating with him at Randy's that I would do anything that uh, I, I would spend three or four days or a day or a week or whatever he wanted to help well, him. I guess, well, I guess the, que the question is, do we want to involve Gary in that process or no? You're saying no. It, it seems like Victor's got uh, a better understanding of what's going on uh, long term. Um, I, I think if Victor's willing to do that, then I think we should we should just have Victor do it. And, um, you know, I, I think if, if Eric's going to come on on the first and then, yeah, June 30 makes sense to talk with Gary and, and, you know, thank him for, for stepping forward again and, and just letting him know that Eric will be starting on the first. So I have, I have one other, uh, one other question. Um, Gary has been operating the excavator. Yeah. Considering we're down a man, does it make any sense at all for us to consider having Gary continue to do part-time work for us operating operating the equipment but not driving the truck? Just a thought. I I personally don't know. I'll ask him, but I don't think he really wants to do that. Okay. I'm not sure, but I, I would... I'm, just, I'm just thinking it's an opportunity to get, I mean, we've got quite a bit of excavator work to do to yeah. get ready for this paving project. 
And I also know we have we have work to do to get ready to uh, screen sand, and we're down a man. So my understanding is, in addition to his supervisory duties, he's been operating the excavator. So it's just a thought. Yeah. Yeah. I I think that if he was even if he was interested in just doing you know one or two days a week, maybe that's maybe that's something. Maybe he's not in every day, but. Uh, Victor can have that conversation with him and see what his interest is, but I, I, uh, I would not be opposed to that idea. I think I, we've got, I just, I just know we've got a hell of a lot of work that we've planned to do this summer and we're down a man and that's a challenge. And it doesn't, it's not like we have people lined up at the door to take on this position. So if Gary has some interest and he can use a little extra money um, and and you feel, Victor, that he's effective at operating the excavator, which I believe he is, as far as I know he is. Uh, I, I, I just think it's something to think about if he has any interest. I'll certainly pursue it. Uh, I'll, I'll certainly talk to him and... Uh, and uh, okay. I can let you know and uh, you can pass it on to... Uh, the rest of the select board and we'll have a meeting we'll have a meeting on the fifth anyway so yeah yeah it's all going to kind of happen at the same time but if he's interested and i'm i'm interested and i think uh phil and randy phil's 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 uh rubbing his jaws if he might be a little interested in this <laughs> i don't know it's just it's just a thought i had that maybe it was an opportunity to help with our manpower shortage issue yeah. Yeah. No, I, 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 uh, I'm sorry, Phil, go ahead. I didn't mean to. No, no, no. I was just confirming what Peter said that, um, yeah, it, it, you know, it's at least one way to look at maybe making, taking up a little bit of slack with our, uh, shortage. So it's worth pursuing. But I'll still let you know, Peter, if that's okay with everybody on the board, and then you can pass it on if that's what you sure. got to do. But, sure. but he's going to, you're going to meet on the 5th, and we're talking about the 30th, which is uh, five days before. Yep. You know what I mean? I mean, you were going to tell okay him. Everybody, if, if he says he's interested, that, that uh, we put him right to work, or do you want to wait till the 5th to make the decision? There's no working days between the 30th and the 5th. Well, that's what well, the fifth oh. is the first working day. Right. So it can wait. Yeah. But wouldn't you like well, to know when you go into the long weekend whether you got to work or not? <laughs> hey, look. Here's, here's what I would say. If he says he's interested in doing it and he wants to work on the fifth, let him work on the fifth. And we can talk about it and decide exactly what the terms of the contract are the night of the fifth. Got it. Does that makes sense to everybody. We're talking about one day. Fine. Almost. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Dorinda. Dorinda. Dorinda doesn't have uh, anything. Um, the one question I had was um, those you had initially talked, I don't know, a couple months ago about possibly handing out those salary sheets that I had done that showed everybody's wages and benefits and all of that. Um, July 1st is right around the corner. Um, I just didn't know if that is something you're planning on doing or how you wanted to distribute them. If it's something department heads or whatever, we're gonna go over with their people or if you wanted, if you even wanted to do it, I didn't get any feedback on them. Well, we did, we did have a quick discussion one night. I, I think the sense of the board was that, yes, we wanted to go ahead and do that. So we thought it was a good idea and that we liked, we liked the uh, format that you came up with. I, okay. I'm not saying it has to be done by July 1st, but we should do it sooner rather than later, yes. Okay, so... Does, again, does guys, everyone get a, a... Does everyone get like a, a paper copy of a of a stub or something like that where yes. you can put it in with the payroll and and yeah. mm -hmm. it can be yeah. in there July and you know maybe the maybe the foreman or the road commissioner can let them know that you know hey don't just chuck your statement this month or this this coming 
you know, payroll and there's a statement of benefits in there for you. Okay. We thought it'd be useful information. Okay. Yep. We can do that. Okay. Next to the one of the fifth. Well, it'll be, yeah, either the, I'll let you know which check they're, which one they're going in. It's a, the check that covers the end of June and the beginning of July is going to be confusing. So I may put it in with the one that is entirely in the that's, new. That's what, I would, yeah. that's what I would recommend. Yeah. So it isn't yeah. prorated. That's just right. Confusing. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So and maybe, right. maybe we just put a note in with that paycheck saying your pay increase has been prorated starting effective July 1st, your next paycheck will show the entire pay raise and you'll receive a statement. Yeah, uh, we're not gonna get, pro that gets too confusing. If you give them too much, we'll yeah. just, they'll get two pay rates on their paycheck that yeah, week, okay. but then we'll do the other another week. One shot. Right. That's it. fine, that's fine. Okay. All right. Else, Dorinda? I think that was it. I don't have anything else for right now. Okay, thank you. Um, Sarah, if, if you wouldn't mind, if you would send, I know Liz is checking her email. If you could just send her a quick email and say that we did pass over the select board thing and we would look forward to seeing her on the 5th and happy, happy travels or hiking or whatever, that'd be great. Yep. And uh, we have we have orders to sign everybody, which I'm sure you're well aware of. Uh, no correspondence, Sarah. No, not really. Okay. Anything mm -hmm. else, anyone? You should you probably didn't approve, approve the minutes. minutes. You didn't oh, yeah, approve you the minutes. minutes. Approve. I'm sorry. We have minutes of the uh, of the uh, special meeting on June 15th. Mm -hmm. And also June seven. We need to approve. I'm sorry. Didn't we have another set of minutes that we weren't able to approve? You had there's a there's a permanent set of minutes we won't be able to approve because Steve has left and right. he so and it was a very it was a minute it was just for the uh, liquor license renewal down at the um, filling station so that was left over from May and it will never be it will never be approved but don't worry about it but you have the June 7th minutes and the June 15th minutes so those okay. so make a motion for those can you do them, can we do them in one yeah yeah well, move approval of the June 7 and uh June 15 minutes okay Randy you'll second yep all in favor aye aye okay thanks guys um, can I ask you guys about a scheduling question? Yes. Okay. So uh, you have a meeting on the 5th. We probably won't have enough information about taxes by the, the tax rate by then. I think Dorinda might is planning to give you some preliminary information. I hate to say this, but we probably should have a special meeting on the 12th of July just to set the tax rate. Yeah. How does that sit with you guys? I'm sorry. I know um, I don't like it any more than anybody else. With with the fifth being a holiday, is there any reason we have to meet on the fifth? Is it could we just switch that meeting to the twelfth? That's up to you. That works for me. Yeah, that probably makes sense. Actually, yes. Okay, I'm all for that. The holiday um, is on the fifth. Yeah. I'll probably have some orders that'll have to be done. At bills that have to be paid. Okay, well, just just let us know, Dorinda. Um, yeah. Okay, so you're moving the meeting of the, you're moving the 5th to the 12th. Yep. So we'll meet um, on the 12th and the 19th. Okay. Great. Yes, I think that's great. That makes, <laughs> yay. So thank you'll you, be, you're going to be postponing the uh, road, the uh, select board position until then as well. Yep, I would say so. Yep. Unless we want to have a, <laughs> No. No. no, we don't. We don't. No, we don't. We don't. We don't. We don't. I mean, there's not going to be anything for anybody to weigh in on until until then, anyway, right? So, right. Yeah. I mean, so wow. we have we have three we have three candidates, correct? Victor, yes, you Jason, have Sarah, Victor, Berger. Jason, and Sarah Berger. Yeah. Okay. Uh, considering that you've got more time, do you want me to keep? 
be beating the bushes, play, fanning the flames, doing whatever? Since we have more, okay. we have more time. My, my, my position is we fanned them. But okay. if somebody yeah. says, do I still have time to submit a letter? Sure. But I wouldn't fan the flames. Okay. Yeah. Agreed. Um, so, Dorinda, just, just one quick question before we go. Do you have any, any updated projection on how we're going to look for year end? Not yet. The bills okay. are still coming in. And, okay. you know, that's, it, it's, I mean, it's a moving target every single week. So, oh, yeah, I know. Okay. Seems like it's going to be extremely tight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, extremely tight and maybe worse. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I did, exactly. I didn't want to go there, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we've known, I mean, we, yeah, we've known we were headed, we were headed in that direction. And we've had a few things happen which have helped us out a little bit. But nevertheless, we had some major, uh, major expenses, repairs, and other uh, issues. So anyway, thank you very much for your time and attention. Happy 4th of July, and we'll uh, get together on the 12th. Thank you.